So this video is going to just give you a couple tips, tricks to help you use your TI-84. And a lot of these commands can be found on other graphing calculators as well. So if you don't have a TI-84 or a Texas Instruments calculator, it should be pretty easy to find the commands on your own calculator. You can check online, look in your user's manual, but you should be good. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is something that a lot of people actually don't know how to use on your calculator. So say I have this nasty repeating decimal that I get as my answer for something. So like, this is the easy example, but 0.6 repeating. So say my calculator gives me that out, right? And I'm like, oh, I can't remember the fraction that is. So if you go to math, actually the first selection is frac. You select that and hit enter. It'll change your decimal into a fraction. So it's, I gave it 0.666666 and it gave me two thirds. So that can be really helpful if you want a rational fraction as an answer, but you're only given a decimal. And likewise, it can work the other way. So I can type in a fraction, let's say 15 over four, and I can go to math, scroll down to the second thing, DEC, decimal, and I hit enter, and it gives me the decimal for that fraction. So that's pretty cool. And then the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the modes on your calculator. So if you go to mode, you are probably scroll down, you probably have real selected, but if you select, it says A plus BI, complex numbers, that can help you out a lot. So say I wanna multiply two complex numbers by each other. And I don't wanna foil it out. I'm a little rusty on my powers of I. I can actually type this in the calculator as is and get out a complex number as my answer. So one plus six. And then I is located second decimal point. All right, times five minus I. Go ahead and hit enter and I get 11 plus 29 I. So that's great. I didn't actually have to do any work, but I got an answer back that's a complex number. Okay, another helpful thing is second enter on the calculator. So let's say I type this in, but I actually wanted it to be five plus I. Instead of writing the whole thing out again in the calculator, I can hit second enter, and then it pulls up what I just typed. So I can go over, change that minus sign to a plus, and now I have the answer that I really needed. Okay. Now for some more calculus-based tips. So let's say I've got a function. Eight x squared plus 16, for example, and I wanna find the derivative at a given point. So I can differentiate by hand, plug in two for x, or I can put this in my y1. So eight x squared plus 16. And then I can hit graph and it's going to graph my function. Okay, another thing, I can't actually see my function right now, but if you go to zoom, and scroll down to zoom fit, zero. It'll put my graph of my function into my window. Okay, so now I wanna find the derivative of two. Go to second trace, that's calc. Scroll down, you should see number six, dy dx. And then select an x point. I'm gonna scroll over to x equals two, but I'm not actually gonna it's giving me weird decimals. I can always plug in two, so push two and hit enter. And it gives me dy dx equals 32. Okay, and then there's another way to do that without graphing the function. So if I go to my home screen, if I hit math, scroll down to number nine, excuse me, eight, 
that's nderiv, hit enter, put in my function. So I'm actually going to use the vars tool to do that. So hit vars, go over to y vars, that's your y equals, select function. And I wrote this in y1, so I'm going to pick y1. Now, the next thing you need for nderiv is the variable you're taking the derivative with respect to. So I'm going to select x, and then you need to select a point. So I want the derivative at x equals 2. I'm going to put 2, hit enter, and again, I get 32. So that's great. And then now let's say I want to take the definite integral of that same function. So this truck. So the integral from 2 to 0 of 8x squared plus 16 dx. So go to math again, and this time scroll down to number 9. That's f and int. And it uses a similar formula. So I'm going to put the function in. Again, I'm going to use vars. So vars, y vars, function, y1, comma. And now I need the variable that I'm integrating with respect to, so x. And then my bounds of integration. So lower bound, 0, comma, upper bound, 2, close parentheses, and then hit enter. And I get 53.3 repeating. And let's say I want that as a fraction. Math frac, 160 over 3. And I can also do this on the graph of my, of my function. So go back to your graph, second calc. This time, scroll down to number 7. You're going to see integral f of x dx. So select that. Lower limit, you can hit 0, enter. Upper limit, 2. And then I get the same thing, 53.3 repeating, which I know is 160 over 3. OK. So I hope these will help you use your calculator a little bit more effectively.